Ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure as Dean of the Auckland Law School to welcome you to the 2016 Law Student Awards. This evening, we will celebrate our best and brightest, our students who have excelled over the last 12 months. We will recognize our student leaders. We'll congratulate the students who've won our competitions, who've represented the Auckland Law School nationally and internationally. We'll mark the achievements of our students who've won prizes and scholarships. What they all have in common is hard work, commitment, perseverance, interest and enthusiasm for the law. I'd like to welcome here tonight all the students who are receiving awards. You have done well and the members of the Faculty of Law here tonight join me in congratulating you. I'd like to welcome your family members and close friends who are able to be here this evening because I'm sure all of our students receiving awards will be well aware that they couldn't have achieved their success without your support, your encouragement, and your love. You can be very proud of all they've achieved and knowing that you've helped make their success possible. I'd like to welcome many of the individuals and organizations and representatives of firms who have donated prizes and scholarships for our best students, who have supported our student societies and the events and competitions they organize, and who have given financial assistance to the law school and what we are trying to do. We are immensely grateful. The prizes and scholarships we're awarding this evening, the donations you provide, mean a lot to our students. They recognize their hard work, the hours spent in libraries, staying up late seeking to master particular courses, cases, legal principles, and areas of the law. This is a very successful law school, nationally and internationally. We are very proud of our students, and we are very grateful for the support many of you here tonight have given. I would like to welcome the members of the legal profession and the judiciary who are here tonight. We have judges who have sat in, or are currently sitting in the district court, the high court, the court of appeal, and the Supreme Court, and I thank you for being able to attend. We are very grateful for the support provided to us, not only in financial terms, but also by helping and mentoring students, adjudicating moots and competitions, and supporting students and faculty activities. The format of tonight's awards ceremony is relatively simple, in that the awards will be presented in the groups that are set out in the program. So before each group, I will ask the students who are in that particular group to come forward to the left of the stage, so to this particular side of the stage, and to line up in the order in the program. That will vaguely make sure, hopefully, you get the certificate with your name on it uh, and don't get a higher award than you're entitled to. <coughs> when I call your name, um, if you come up the steps just here, um, and I suppose that's the cue when I, when I have finished calling the name, um, that's the cue where people can applaud and congratulate the student. Uh, but if you come up, um, shake my hand at that point, and then go behind me uh, to where the Deputy Dean, um, Professor Susan Watson, uh, will present you with your certificate. And then once you've received the certificate, if you could go to, the, to this side of the stage, uh, it'll be from where you're looking at, the right-hand side of the stage, and if you could wait until we've got all the members of that particular group together, because what we will then do uh, is a group photograph of everyone in that group. So that will give um, the audience a very slight intermission of um, half a minute or three quarters of a minute while everyone's lined up for the group photograph. That's where you can talk to your neighbours, um, eat, drink, uh, be merry, but not too much so, um, because then we'll immediately go on to uh, the very next award at that particular point. But again, probably... Uh, when we've photographed the group, that may be another occasion to uh, congratulate them all as a group uh, for what they've achieved. So I would ask at this point if those who are in the program as student leaders could come forward um, and assemble on the left-hand side of the stage. Because really what we want to do um, with this part of the program is to thank and congratulate those who put a lot of work into our student societies. And when I read out the names, um, AULSS, the Auckland University Law Student Society, is one of the most active and successful law student societies in the country. It organises a wide range of competitions, seminars, workshops, sports, drink, social events. <laughs> <coughs> Taraka Turi provides a community and support for our Maori law students. 
Just one example of the work they do is organising an annual hiranger uh, to schools um, to promote uh, coming to law school, thinking of going to university, uh, and I know that they inform and infuse large numbers of school pupils, many of whom end up at Auckland University as a result. PULSA is our Pacific Island Law Students Association, and they provide community and support for our Pacific law students. Just recently, they put on a cultural day for all law students, and it was wonderful to see uh, the dancing, the food, over 300 students um, coming from all around the law school to participate on that occasion. Rainbow Law is the group that provides community and support for our lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender students. Last year, Rainbow Law hosted Justice Michael Kirby, one of Australia's best known judges, who came and spoke about marriage equality. The Equal Justice Project is an endeavour that involves, over the years, many hundreds of our students who take part in providing free legal assistance um, to individuals, to organisations who might not be able to afford the cost of lawyers, and they do so in partnership with community groups, community law centres, and members of the legal profession. The AULR is the Auckland University Law Review, and this is um, uniquely in New Zealand an entirely student-run publication. And it means that for the editors, and we'll only uh, be congratulating the editors-in-chief today, uh, but there's a whole array of editors who spend a lot of time reading, reviewing, editing, and publishing what is an extremely high-quality journal. The Law Review, not to, be compare, not to be confused with the Auckland University Law Review, is uh, where a large number of students take to the stage to sing, dance, satire and lampoon various aspects of the law and society. You can see some of their past endeavours on YouTube and I was interested to see that one of their uh, video clips from the 2014 production has now received over 5 million views, which are possibly more than most academic articles in terms of impact. <laughs> and last but not least, um, we're going to congratulate or thank the president of our Mooting Society, this is a new society only established in 2013, but already it's achieved an enormous amount to encourage and promote mooting at all levels. This year, 750 of our students have joined the Mooting Society. It helped establish a new mooting competition for third and fourth year students two years ago, the John Haig Memorial Moot Competition, in which 82 students competed last year. And they have just established a new competition for first year students which is to be named in honour of Justice Sir Robert Chambers. I'd ask you to congratulate and thank the President of the Auckland University Law Student Society, Alex Churchill. Thanks again, and we look forward to catch you up on Friday. Right yeah. The Administrative Vice President for the Auckland University Law Student Society, Ella Maiden. And the competitions officers who put together a whole of the competitions we're going to talk about um, shortly. Uh, firstly, Danyon Chong. Well done. You've been kept busy. <laughs> and Ross Frankie. Who must be missing in action organising some competitions. <coughs> um, we have the, one of the Ko Tumuaki of Tarako Turi, Evander Dawson. Again, thanks all for all the work you're doing. And co-president of the Pacific Island Law Students Association, Irene Carnavano. We have the directors of Rainbow Law. Firstly, Matthew Denton. Thanks for your leadership, Matthew. And Reka Patel. Thanks for helping lead the society. Uh, editors of the Auckland University Law Review, George Dawson. We've got a lot of work ahead. <laughs> Thanks. And Chloe Fleming. I imagine it's going to keep you busy this year. <laughs> uh, we only have one of the directors uh, of the Singing and Dancing Law Review because the others, in fact, are putting on a rehearsal tonight which has taken away a few of our other... Uh, award recipient, so I'm going to, when I watch the Law Review, it's going to have to be jolly good. Um, but the director representing them tonight, Joseph Zulu. Looking forward to seeing that later in the year. <laughs> yes. 
and the president of the Mooting Society, Josh Suka. Thanks again, Josh, for your work. Would the winners of the Auckland Law School competitions and our representatives at national competitions come up alongside the stage, and that's in the program up to and including our representatives at the Red Cross Moot. Um, the international competition representatives will follow this group. Every year we have very large numbers of our students compete in the law school's competitions in witness examination, in negotiation, in client interviewing, and mooting. Um, and for those of you not from a legal Mac background, mooting is the one that sounds a little bit strange, but this is a mock court case on a point of law, and in some ways is the closest uh, experience you can get to appearing in court to argue a legal issue on appeal, and we have, as a result, quite a large number of mooting competitions. I would like to very much thank the law firms who sponsor these competitions and who support the costs of our sending teams to the New Zealand and Australasian championships. Uh, the winners last year of the Buddle Findlay negotiation competition, would you first congratulate Michael Grenup? And co-winner of the negotiation competition, Hayden Hughes. Well done again, Hayden. <laughs> and winner of the Russell McVeigh client interviewing competition, Andrew Grant. <laughs> winner of the Minter Ellison Rudd Watts witness examination, Roshana Ching. Congratulations, Oshana. <laughs> the winners of the Brian Schenken Family Law Memorial Moot, firstly, Hayley Drown. <laughs> and Amelia Rayburn. Well done, Amelia. I should actually say everyone's been following each other and stepping around the side of the stage, but there is actually steps here. I'm just sort of worried someone will fall into the flower pots in a moment. So um, on that note, uh, the winner of the Kylie Thompson Kaisley Employment Law Moot, Jack Davies. I think you're up numerous times, aren't you, in a moment? <laughs> uh, the winner of the Gina Rudlin Memorial Prize for the Maori issue top mooter, Matthew Tihi. Well done again, Matthew. <laughs> And the winner of the Pacific Lawyers Association Prize for the Pacific Issues Legal Moot, Joseph Zulu. Oh. Second appearance tonight. <laughs> now the winners of the Junior Mooting Competition also went on to win the New Zealand Junior Mooting Competition. Uh, so firstly, Caitlin Anion peters Congratulations on doing so well. And Catherine Eichelbaum. Congratulations on doing so well. The winners of the John Hay Memorial Moot for intermediate level mooting uh, may already be on that side of the stage. Hayden Hughes, or has he come back around? Yeah. Just over here. So, <laughs> second time. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and also, winner of the John Hay Memorial Moot for intermediate level mooting, Joy Go. Really well done. I hope you're keeping up the mooting. And the winner of the senior mooting, uh, the, so this, we have two senior mooting competitions, the Stout competition and the Meredith Connell Greg Everard Memorial Mooting Competition. But I should say the winner of last year's Greg Everard last night um, was also one of the winners of this year's Stout Shield, so he'll come back next year to receive that. Uh, but being recognised now as winner of the Meredith Connell Greg Everard Memorial Mooting Competition, Andrew Grant. <laughs> And the winners of last year's Stout Shield Mooting Competition, and therefore winners of the Gary Davies Memorial Prize, uh, the first um, named person also won the Jeffrey Powell Prize for the best mooter uh, in that competition, Sam Jeffs. Really well done again, Sam. <laughs> and also winner of last year's Stout Shield Mooting Competition, Carter Pierce. Really well done, Carter. Great. And um, the students who were chosen and selected 
uh, to represent us at the Red Cross Asia Pacific International Humanitarian Law MOOC competition, and that's a national competition they competed in the final rounds. Firstly, uh, again, Jack Davies. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> and Alana Colley. <laughs> well done, Alana. And the coach of that team, but I can't see if she's here, is Trussa Dunworth. But if she's not, we should congratulate her anyway. <laughs> And can I next ask those students who represented Auckland at international competitions the last few months to please make their way to the side of the stage. The Auckland Law School did extremely well in competitions last year. We again won the senior and junior mooting at the New Zealand Law Student Competition Finals. And indeed we have won the senior mooting competition, uh, the national senior mooting competition for eight of the last nine years. So it really is a tribute to the teams, their coaches, and the help and assistance that many practitioners, judges, and mediators have given in the practice rounds. The first team I'm going to call upon uh, took part for the very first time ever. We sent a team to the Australian and New Zealand aviation law competition. Uh, and we did that because we started up a course in aviation law um, just two years ago. So the first time we went to the Australian New Zealand competition, uh, and our team won that last year. The team recently went on to compete in the Sarin International Air, Lo Air Law Moot Competition in Jakarta, where they won all of their preliminary rounds uh, and were ranked sixth in the world overall. So a great achievement. Uh, one or two of these people are, we've seen in the earlier group, but we'll, could we first congratulate our Air Lo Law Moot team uh, representatives. Firstly, Jack Davies. <laughs> well done again, Jack. I know, there's been an amendment. Michael Greenup. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael. <laughs> Nick Porter. <laughs> really well done, Nick. <laughs> uh, and the two coaches, firstly, Marion Hiriot. <laughs> Jack was arguing about the ranking with me. <laughs> <laughs> and Caitlin Hollings, also coaching. Well done, Caitlin. <laughs> The next people to come up represented Auckland in the International Chamber of Commerce International Commercial Mediation Competition, and we're very grateful to Fairway Resolution uh, for having assisted with the costs of our sending a team to Paris so that this team could compete in the final rounds. In Paris, they competed against 65 other universities. They won all of their preliminary rounds. They defeated Cornell in the quarterfinals, Monash University in the semifinals, and they only very narrowly lost the grand final on a 3-2 vote of the judges. So an incredible achievement um, in international commercial mediation competition. If we first congratulate Michael Grenup. Oh. <laughs> I think he's in all the teams. Honor Kerry. <coughs> well done again, I'm doing so well. <laughs> Anna Leonard. Really well done again. <laughs> and the coach, Nina Corey. <laughs> really well done again, Nina. <laughs> because our team won the national competition, we had the right to represent New Zealand in the Jessup International Law Mooting Competition in Washington, D.C. Our team there competed against 132 universities. They won all of their preliminary rounds and they were ranked ninth uh, at the end of the preliminary round stages. So while in the end they didn't proceed to the grand final, uh, it was a team that, not only having won the national competition, represented us incredibly well overseas. Uh, again, one or two of these people have been in other mooting teams, but if we first congratulate Andrew Grant. <laughs> well done again, Andrew. <laughs> Joy Go. <coughs> well done again, Joy. <laughs> Sam Jeffs. Well done again, Sam. <laughs> Carter Pierce. Really well done, Carter. Thank you. Hannah Reed. Really well done, Hannah. <laughs> and the coach, Anna Hood. 
We've still got to get the team together, don't we, for a drinks function. <laughs> it's marvellous. And um, the other team that I want to mention tonight uh, represented us in the William Viss commercial arbitration moot. And we're incredibly grateful to Bankside Chambers uh, for sponsoring this team's participation, which meant they went to a number of pre-mooting competitions, and they won two of the pre-mooting competitions, uh, and then they went to Vienna for the final. And this really is an enormous mooting competition, 2,000 students competing in the finals in Vienna from 311 teams. Our team did incredibly well. Firstly, they got through to the top 64, where they defeated Munich University, the top 32, where they defeated the Chinese University of Hong Kong, the top 16, where they defeated Columbia University, the top eight, where they defeated the Middle Temple, and they only lost uh, the semi-finals to the eventual winners of the competition. So third overall semi-finalists, setting a new record for the law school uh, in the largest mooting competition in the world, will we first congratulate Raul Baptista. Really well done again, Raul. <laughs> uh, again, Jack Davies. Oh. <laughs> well done, Jack. <laughs> Taylor Gray. <laughs> oh, you're taking the shortcut. <laughs> well done. Joanna Nedelvov. Really well done again. <laughs> and the coaches, firstly, Tom Clark. Uh, you remember the stairs. <laughs> well done. And Nikolai Santa Maria. Really well done again, Nikolai. <laughs> and we also, one of our students did incredibly well in an international law essay competition, the Victoria Fisher Memorial Prize is given for an essay on the relationship between women and the law, uh, and Alana's essay was on sexual exploitation allegations against UN peacekeepers uh, and the role of law in that. Would you please congratulate the winner of this international competition, Alana Colley. <laughs> really well done, Alana. Would the winners of the new entrant prizes please come to the side of the stage? The new entrant prizes are awarded to school leavers and they receive uh, $100 book token awards. These are incredibly competitive um, prizes to receive because um, people can apply, anyone applying to enter first year law at Auckland can apply for a new entrant prize. We have around 1,500 students in first year law and we've awarded just 24 prizes and nine scholarships. So 33 people out of 1,500. Would you first congratulate Daisy Archibald? Hope you're enjoying it so far. Yeah, Great. <laughs> Jesse Chen. <laughs> really well done, Jesse. Congratulations. Actually, I might get the line to come a little bit closer, or we're waiting um, sort of the long walk otherwise. Uh, could we also congratulate? Uh, Annalisa Chen. Sorry, I think I mucked up the order there. <laughs> Great. Kiara Connolly. Really well done, congratulations. Morgan Delton Mill. Really well done, Morgan, congratulations. Devika Deer. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Great. <laughs> Lise Harakia. Congratulations, really well done. <laughs> Brittany Jacobson. Really well done, Brittany. <laughs> Emily James. Really well done, Emily. <laughs> Lena Kim. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Good. <laughs> Ama Lowe. Really well done, congratulations. Kia O. Congratulations, really well done. Bronte Page. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Good. Jack Potaka. Really well done, Jack, congratulations. Katrina Seno. 
Congratulations, Katrina. Well done. <laughs> Sophie Shrimpton. Hope you're enjoying law school. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Jessica Watson. Really well done, Jessica. <laughs> and Fiona Wu. Well done. Looking at our prize winners, I think um, we should have a revolution in terms of female representation in the law to come. <laughs> and would the recipients of the new entrance scholarships uh, please come to the side of the stage. The new entrance scholars have received a thousand dollars scholarship each and to achieve that almost perfect or perfect school, sc school results are needed. Um, so hopefully receiving the scholarships will encourage uh, these people to continue to do well. Uh, we have around, as I mentioned, 1,500 students who come into first year law, and then we drop to 330 students in second year law, so it's incredibly competitive in this law school to get through, uh, but that means that we have a very high caliber cohort, uh, and given that these people are the nine students in that cohort who won the new entrance scholarships, uh, we expect great things of them. Would you first congratulate Victoria Chan? Hope you're enjoying law school. Thank you. Great. Rashika Chopara. Really well done again. Congratulations. Genua Anna Dong. Congratulations. Really well done. <laughs> Emma Kerr. Really well done. Congratulations. Alex King. You're one of the few men that are doing so well. <laughs> Catherine Pigu. Congratulations, really well done. <laughs> Kiara Supershed. You enjoying law school so far? Good. <laughs> Emma Wordsworth. Really well done, congratulations. And Scott Young. Really well done, congratulations. Just like our prize winners, I think, um, again, the men have some catching up to do in terms of scholastic excellence. <laughs> We're honoured to have as our guest speaker this evening, Justice Helen Winkelman, a judge of the Court of Appeal. Justice Winkelman, first and foremost, is an alumna of this law school, but she's had a very distinguished career in the law. She was a lawyer, a partner of Phillips Fox, a barrister soul, uh, was made a High Court judge in 2004 and became the Chief High Court judge in 2010 before taking up her current position on the Court of Appeal last year. Justice Wynne Kelman uh, is, I think, a really great example to all of the students in our law school, uh, particularly to the women law students, not that they perhaps need encouragement um, from what we've just seen uh, in the law school, because she has been a trailblazer in the law. As Chief High Court Judge, the work that she undertook to improve case management, to improve uh, the delivery of judgments in good time uh, for litigants uh, was incredibly noticeable. The reforms uh, and the efficiency that was brought uh, to the work of the High Court uh, and the meaning that that had before parties to the court. Um, I also would suggest to the students that you have a look at, so just to single out I suppose one example of the work um, and uh, the career of Justice Winkelman. I'd suggest you have a look, if you haven't already, at her lecture on access and ju to justice in 2014. Because I was struck that in that lecture, she talks about the fact that for centuries, judges and lawyers have worked together to ensure that all can enjoy the benefit of the protection of the law, including those who are vulnerable by reason of limited means, limited education, their minority status or gender. And in that lecture, she talked about the problems people today had gaining access to the law, the problems of the cost of lawyers, the problems of the cost of court fees, and noted that unless we have proper access to law, we will live in a society where the strong will by any means always win out against the weak. She talked about the problems when you ended up with unrepresented litigants who couldn't afford to, bring their, to have their own lawyers, who naturally would have difficulty in preparing adequately uh, who had none of the knowledge of the law, uh, how a case should be pleaded, or what evidence was relevant. She said, the court system is for many a foreign land, 
and the notion of bringing proceedings without legal representation can be compared to the fearful prospect of being stranded in a foreign land, unable to speak the language, and without the money needed to find your way home. And if we have a court system where many, many, many ordinary people could not contemplate going to court because of the cost of doing so, we have a court system that is vulnerable, is fragile, and where the legal profession and the judiciary need to look at what the court system should represent and the people it could protect. So I was very proud to read one of our alumna talking about one of the major issues in the law, expressing it so eloquently as she does in all her judgments, but who overall has a keen sense of justice and justice for all sectors of the community. Would you please welcome Justice Winkelman. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak tonight. Um, as a judge, I spend a lot of time listening to other people speak, so I know about the importance of keeping it short. This seems to me to particularly apply tonight as I'm aware that I stand between some of, some of you and your prizes. In any case, you can relax about how long I'm going to take because um, the run sheet was sent to me in preparation for this event, and believe me, nothing has been left to chance. It started at 8 a.m. this morning. Um, and according to the run sheet, I'm allowed 12 minutes and no more. <laughs> so I better get underway. First of all, wow, these people who came up on stage today, um, some bright talents. I was pleased to see my judge's clerk, Jack Davies, repeatedly appeared. <laughs> that's, that's standing you in good stead, Jack. I want to congratulate you all on the achievements that we're here to recognise and to celebrate. Some of you will have achieved through your natural brilliance, but most of you, like me, need to put in some pretty hard work to shine out, and you clearly have done that. I also say well done to your families. As Andrew mentioned, you didn't get here on your own, and I know that families uh, provide support in any way they can, and it must have been quite some support because you've achieved at a very high level. I've decided to select one theme for this evening and to stick to it, and some of it will revisit a little bit of what Andrew said, but I hope not in a monotonous way, about access to justice. I'm going to address you as future leaders of the profession, because that is what you surely are, and I'm aware that present tonight are also members of the profession, um, senior members of the profession, so there might be a few messages that they can listen to on the way. So your future leaders of the profession, well, maybe a few of you will go off and become CEOs of tech companies. They pay better than the law these days. Or lead unmanned, women-led missions to Mars. But most of you will stay in the profession because it's an important profession about which there's a lot to love and you will become its leaders. I don't mean to flatter you in this way in any way but let's look at it as a matter of probabilities. If you have the brains and the application to be at the front of your co cohort at this stage, I think the same will hold true with the rest of your time in the law. The law's an exciting career, no matter what path you follow. In my experience, it gives you plenty of opportunities to stretch your mind and to test your moral fibre to find out who you really are. And I am very interested to know who you are what will interest you in the law? Do you understand the golden threads that run through the law like fairness, the presumption of innocence, the protection of all from the abuse of power? Will you be motivated by achieving just outcomes or will you be happy to engage in a process so long as you can charge for it? Do you have courage? Do you go human or again only if it's chargeable? In short, are you doing this to just earn a living or also because you understand the power and frankly what I think of as the beauty of the law and want to contribute something to our society? The thing about the practice of the law is that you will be asking yourself these things in the not too distant future when you're confronted with the sometimes terrible reality of client demands and chargeable hour targets. For my part, I'd like to know these things about our future leaders, because after sitting as a judge for 12 years in the High Court and now in the Court of Appeal, I've seen the importance of a profession made up of people of moral and intellectual integrity who wish to use their skills and knowledge to contribute something to society. Who you are is important because you are now a member of 
the profession which plays the most critical role in our democracy through upholding the rule of law and the administration of justice. And for those non-lawyers in the room, I say hello. Um, you're now members of the club by association, don't worry, it's a good club. Um, but I also offer a quick explanation of the rule of law, which is the thing that Andrew was talking about before, the notion that everyone in our society exists under and is equal before the law, the powerful and the weak, the rich and the poor, all are bound by and equal before the law. And the rule of law is really the bedrock on which our New Zealand society is built. And it's a grand, grand sounding principle, but I recommend it to you as something that should resound throughout your career. It isn't just something for the top end of town, for the QCs taking the glamorous cases to the Supreme Court. Lawyers uphold the royal rule of law by enabling access to justice. The person in the local conveyancing practice is just as important here as the partner in the Shortland Street law firm. The work of the family lawyer helps people order and document their, their affairs in ways that create legally enforceable rights and obligations. And lawyers practicing in the various tribunals and courts are also important whether they work at legal aid rates or can premium build. All practicing lawyers enable people to enforce their legal rights and ensure they obtain the protection of the law. And as future leaders of the profession, you have a particular role here because you will set the standards for the profession through the quality of your conduct, the advice you give your clients and the arguments you make in court. I hope that as future leaders you will also play your part in developing the indigenous law of New Zealand, what Justice Joe Williams calls Lex Aotearoa, our own law for this time and place. Our nation, the legendary fish that Maui pulled up from the ocean, already swims in its own ocean waters. It always has done, it's, sw it's always swum in its own legal waters, but that reality was brought home to my generation by the cutting of ties from England and by the development of the law in connection with the Treaty of Waitangi. I know with confidence that Lex Aotearoa will continue to develop in content, content and richness. And I should say something about that expression, Lex Aotearoa, because it's one of the principles that will have been drummed into law students that they shouldn't use Latin. But it's so nice, I can't resist. Um, as future leaders, I place on your shoulders the mantle of conscious engagement with this process, the process of the development of our law. The quality of our nation's law is directly connected to the intellect and imagination of those in our legal profession. Lawyers who spot the legal issue, who conceive of the novel argument, but see always those golden threads that run through the law and which underpin our liberal democracy. What other challenges do I set for you as future leaders? At the front of my mind, and I'd say at the front of the profession's mind, is the challenge of enabling access to justice. The problem is that most New Zealanders simply cannot afford to seek legal advice if they run into difficulty, legal difficulty of any kind. They can't resort, afford to have resort to the courts. And the obstacles for those who seek act, access to justice are many, but some of them are problems the legal profession needs to address. It is too expensive to get help from a lawyer. When lawyers are engaged, they can unnecessarily complicate matters. Getting help from a lawyer becomes not only expensive, but also a test of endurance. So what can you do as future leaders of the profession? Well, you can join the working groups that the Law Society and the Bar Association have set up to address access to justice, because both those organisations have identified this as the most important issue for our profession. You can volunteer to work at community law centres. And when you feel brave enough, you can tell your employers that you would like to do lower value work. Work for people who cannot afford your full charge out rate. Why would you do all these things? Well, my thought is that this is work which will give you great experience. If you're a court lawyer, it will give you the chance to get into court more often, so you're not spending, spending your life working on electronic discovery. Just as importantly, it will meet that need that you have, I'm sure you have, to do something that feels like it matters, because the work you will be doing will be important to your client and it might even change a life. What's my next challenge for you? Well, this might be just as tough as the last. And given what we've just seen, it may not surprise you. The challenge is how to make this profi profession fit for all its members. Sometime in the next 
year or two, we will reach the moment in time when more than half of practicing lawyers are women. You might be surprised we haven't already reached that point when you saw it before, but you've got to think that there are practicing lawyers who are practicing well into their 70s. But even so, we're about to reach the point in time when more than half of practicing lawyers are women. Nevertheless, women remain underrepresented amongst law firm partners at the senior bar and in the higher judiciary. This is a problem for our profession as it means that we are not bringing through to leadership roles some of our best and brightest. I should say that this is not the result of any deliberate keeping out of women, far from it. Successive Attorney Generals have been committed to appointing able senior women to the district court and higher court benches. But the problems that, have, that they face um, is that retaining women in the law until they have sufficient experience for appointment is just very difficult. Law firms and the provision of legal services are organised in a way at the moment which is difficult for parents of young children to manage. And I think this is why we are seeing so many very able lawyers moving into, into in-house legal positions. And all of these problems are really connected, but I could speak for a, a probably two hours on, on how they relate. But I'm going to suggest a radical prescription, which is, is that law firms should be making people up to partnership at a younger age. I was made a partner in a law firm in my 20s. That was not because I was a wonder child. It was because the sensible male partners knew that if they wanted to retain talent, they had to bring that talent through to partnership. Today, things are different. The present business model sets partnership in a law firm as the goal for your mid to late 30s. The time when people plan to have children is now also the time when they should be pressing for partnership. I speak from experience when I say it's much easier to manage being a working parent when you're a partner with a team and have the financial resources that partnership usually brings. And my other radical prescription, sad to call it a radical prescription in the year 2016, is more equal sharing of child caring responsibility between parents, so this isn't a woman's problem anymore. So what can you do? Well, if you're a woman working in a law firm, start to have the conversations about your career aspirations. Believe me, law firms want to bring the able through to partnership, but start to contribute to the, to the discussions about how the law can accommodate your aspirations. Don't just sit back and wait for someone else to make it work for you. You should fight to make it work. This is a career worth fighting for. Now I could go on and list further challenges you will face as future leaders of the profession, the rise of online delivery of legal services, or the existential threat to all professions that the rise of artificial intelligence is. But on a happy occasion such as tonight, I will use the excuse that I must be at about 12 minutes to bring this talk to an end. Um, but I want to end by saluting again your achievements so far and express the, the wish that you will take up the mantle of leadership that I have offered you. I think it would be great if in 30 years time, it was one of you in the spot speaking to the new crop of future leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice Winkelman, for your thoughtful and insightful comments, uh, not only for our students here as they contemplate their careers ahead, but also, I'm sure, for members of the legal profession and the judiciary. Would the winners and recipients of the undergraduate prizes and scholarships um, please come to the side of the stage? The students we're recognising now, we've just um, earlier obviously recognised some first year students who won the new entrant prizes and scholarships. These are the prizes given in the LLB degree uh, for students in second year and above because after first year our students move to the compulsory law subjects, the major areas of law with lots of conceptual thinking, so contract, torts, public crimes, land, equity, uh, and then they go on uh, to elective courses and at the Auckland Law School there's a choice of around 50 elective courses, um, so an incredibly large number of elective choices. Uh, the largest range of any law school in this country. 
We have, as you will see, um, quite a lot of scholarships and subject prizes, but you will be able to count that we have far less than 50. So if there's anyone in the audience um, feeling they don't know what to do with all of their money, um, I would suggest that um, uh, certainly see me afterwards and we're very happy to establish new subject prizes or scholarships. Uh, we do have several new prizes uh, this year, and I'd like to uh, thank uh, the individuals, the organisations who have donated them. I know that among the audience, uh, we have the wife uh, of Judge Avrinash Dio Bhakta, uh, and we have a prize in criminal procedure, which has been established uh, in his memory. Uh, we also have um, David Williams QC is with us, uh, and he led uh, his class reunion from 1965, um, the class of 1965, and they banded together uh, and have established a prize. We'll come on to uh, the class of 1965 prize in commercial arbitration. Could we first congratulate the winner of the A.J. Davis Scholarship in Law and also the winner of the Sir Alexander Johnston Scholarship in Law, Bridget McClay. Really well done. Congratulations, Bridget. Uh, our next student has been up on the stage, I think, multiple times already today, but he has also won the A.J. Park Intellectual Property Law Prize, the Brookfields Lawyers Scholarship, the Class of 1965 Prize in Commercial Arbitration, and the F.A. de la Mer Memorial Prize, Jack Davies. <laughs> really well done, Jack. Congratulations. <laughs> The winners of the Air New Zealand Aviation Law Prize, firstly, Felicity Ellis. Congratulations, Felicity, well done. And also Hannah Reid. Really well done. <laughs> the winner of the Auckland Woman Lawyers Association Margaret Wilson Scholarship, Alana Colley. You're also getting quite a lot of certificates. <laughs> The winner of the Baldwin's Law and Information Technology Prize, Hilary Fee. Really well done, Hilary. Congratulations. <coughs> the winners of the David R. Mummery Memorial Scholarship in Law uh, for Part 2 students. Uh, firstly, Ja Yung Kim. Really well done. Congratulations. And Sarah Jacob. Congratulations on doing so well. <laughs> the winners of the Davies Sproul Memorial Prize in Family Law, firstly, Cassandra McAllister Lyons. Are you doing advanced family law now? Good. <laughs> and Alexander Sheehan. Are you going to do advanced family now? <laughs> the winner of the Desmond Lewis Memorial Prize in International Law, Tiffany Dvorak. Really well done, congratulations. Uh, the Erica Pabbs Scholarship honours the life and vision of a former teacher by supporting students who give back to the community and show commitment to justice for the weakest members of society. If we could congratulate Samantha Giannotti. Well done, congratulations. The winner of the Himaunga Tai Tai Prize for Academic Achievement, Simon Moore. Really well done, Simon. Congratulations. We have two winners of the Johnston Foundation Prizes in Company Law, Jonathan Morton. Congratulations, Jonathan. And Max Smith. Really well done, Max. Congratulations. Uh, our next student has won several prizes, the LexisNexis Prize in Land Law, the Wilson Harl Prize in Commercial Law, and the Wynne Williams Prize in Equity, three of our major subjects, George Dawson. Very well done, George. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> the winner of the Lowndes Jordan Prize in Corporate Legal Studies, Keegan Lopez. Congratulations, Keegan. Well done. <laughs> The winner of the Martin Finlay Memorial Scholarship for Part 3 students, Rears Gardy. <laughs> really well done, Rears. Congratulations. The winner of the Marilyn Eve Mayo Endowment Scholarship, Joanna Nedelvov. Up for a second time. <laughs> 
The winner of the Meltzer Mason Prize and Company liquidations, Ash Williams. Congratulations, Ash. Well done. Uh, the winners of the Meredith Connell Criminal Law Sentencing Advocacy Prizes, firstly, Angus Pride. Hope you're taking up mooting as well. Good. <laughs> and Ainsley Stone. Congratulations, really well done. The winner of the Minter Allison Rudd Watts Auckland University Law Review, uh, the best article in the Auckland University Law Review Legal Writing Prize, Steph Panzik. Really well done, congratulations. <laughs> if we've still got enough room on stage, um, we have, this will test the photographer in a moment, we have the winners of the New Zealand Law Review Prizes. These are the prizes given for the best results in first year law. Uh, so with 1,500 people to contend with, Firstly, Chris Brunt. Really well done, Chris. Congratulations. And Sebastian Hartley. Really well done, Sebastian. Congratulations. The winner of the New Zealand Society of Notaries Incorporated Conflict of Laws Prize, Caroline Redling Hayes. The winner of the Shortland Chambers Prize in Public Law, Andrew Coffin. Well done, congratulations, Andrew. The winner of the Simpson Grierson Employment Law Prize, Michael Grenop. <laughs> you must have so many certificates. <laughs> uh, Simpson Grierson have also sponsored the Rainbow Law Prizes for contribution to LGBTI law school community. Firstly, Matthew Denton. Leading and winning, well done. <laughs> and also Rekha Patel. <laughs> really well done again. <laughs> uh, the winner of the Thomson Reuters Prize in Criminal Law, Anna Chernovskaya. <laughs> really well done, that's great. Uh, the winners of the Thomson Reuters Prize in Medical Law, firstly Abby Lawson. Really well done, Abby. And also Cherry Nan. Really well done, congratulations. And the winner of the Thompson Reuters Prize, and the very last one to hopefully fit on the stage, in both torts and in contract, Daniel Scholes. Really well done, Daniel. Congratulations. Let's see if we can find some room. While the photographer is taking that photo, if I can call upon the winners and recipients of the postgraduate prizes and scholarships to uh, come to the side of the stage. The Auckland Law School has the largest LLM program in the country. Indeed, we have more LLM students than all the other New Zealand law, law schools combined. Um, and I think it is um, fair to say it's a very vigorous program. Uh, we get a large number of overseas scholars who come and teach on our LLM program as well as people from within the faculty. Uh, and we get equally a large number of international students uh, as well as students who are uh, studying and in the profession. Uh, the first awards, and these are for the best applicants uh, for the LLM program, so very competitive. Uh, and these awards are very substantial awards, and they have been funded by some of our alumni in London and New York. Uh, but the Faculty of Law LLM Awards, would you first congratulate Sam Johnston? Really well done, Sam. Congratulations. And also Claire McGeorge. Really well done. Congratulations, Claire. The Gaze Burt Prize for Master of Laws in Commercial Subjects, Ben Foster. Really well done, Ben. Congratulations. And the Fouds Memorial Prize, so this is people who are now completing the degree as opposed to joining the degree. The Fouds Memorial Prize is for the top master's student, Kate Stone. Congratulations. Really well done, Kate. Now, if you come to the side, hopefully our photographer might be ready. I can't quite see what's happening in that direction. Still organising, is it? Well, in that case, we will hold you there. Or perhaps, do you want to move on so you're the next group for him to photograph? Um, it'll be wee slightly easier, I suspect. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, that's going, is it? Or do you think I? Yeah. So could I get the winners of the Faculty of Law Dean's Academic Excellence Awards to come to the side of the stage, but not the senior scholars at this point. We are now coming to the awards giving to students who are graduating from the LLB and LLB Honours. And the Faculty of Law Dean's Academic Excellence Awards are given to the top 10% of the graduating class. So given that we graduate 300 students a year, uh, these are students who obviously have done uh, incredibly well on the, um, on the LLB and LLB Honours. Um, so firstly, could we congratulate Peggy Anstett. Congratulations, Peggy, really well done. Elliot Cooper. Really well done, Elliot. Congratulations. Michael Finnegan. Oh, you're taking the shortcut. <laughs> well done, Michael. <laughs> Jess Greenhelt. Really well done. Congratulations, Jess. Elizabeth Horvath. Well done, Elizabeth. Congratulations. Rebecca Kennedy. Really well done. Congratulations. Amy Christensen Misa. <laughs> really well done. Congratulations. Elizabeth Morrison Jones. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Well done. <laughs> Rory Nolan. Well done, Rory. Congratulations again. <laughs> Savannah Post. Really well done, congratulations. Tom Richards. Well done, Tom, congratulations. Jessica Seo. Really well done, Jessica, that's great. Max Smith. <laughs> really well done, Max. Luke Strom. Well done, Luke. Congratulations. Carly Toe. Really well done. Congratulations. Emma Warner. Well done, Emma. Congratulations. Yoav Zianov. Really well done. Congratulations. And would the winners of the Senior Scholarship please come uh, to the side of the stage. So the next group of students have won Faculty of Law Dean's Excellence Awards because they were also, uh, as with this group of students, in the top 10% of their cohort. Uh, but the next group of students have also won Senior Scholar Awards. Uh, and those are awarded for the very best students in the university. And so it's our very top um, eight or nine students uh, from the 300. So could we first congratulate Kit Adamson. It's a great achievement, Kit. Very well done. <laughs> Tiffany Divorshuk. It's a really great achievement. Well done. Taylor Gray. <laughs> On the stage several times, Taylor. <laughs> Caitlin Hollings. It's a really great achievement. Well done, Caitlin. <laughs> Daniel Houghton. Really well done, Daniel. Congratulations. <laughs> Samuel Jeffs. I think we had Sam Jeffs the rest of the time. <laughs> Aidan Lomas. Really well done, Aidan. Congratulations. <laughs> Keegan Lopez. Really well done. That's a stunning achievement. Well done. Our final award for this evening uh, should be relatively easy to, photo to photograph because it is only one student. And this is the Auckland District Law Society's prize. And indeed, this was a prize won by Justice Winkelman just a few years ago. Um, this is the prize that is awarded to the top law undergraduate. Uh, so the top law undergraduate also receives uh, a Faculty of Law Dean's Excellence Award and a Senior Scholar Award. Uh, this year's recipient uh, is also, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, has achieved a lot in other fields because he's also been a member of the New Zealand men's water polo team, so he hasn't quite just confined himself to academia. 
Uh, he served as an intern at the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague, uh, and as well as the award we're congratulating him for today, uh, he also won a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford. Would you please congratulate Finn Lowry. <laughs> to give a little roll call there, so <laughs> come over and um, And as you may have guessed from the programme, that does bring tonight's proceedings to an end. I think you'll agree with me, uh, we have a fabulous group of students who have worked incredibly hard, who have achieved a lot, who have been given a challenge by Justice Winkelman to think about the values, the golden threads of the law and what they can achieve. Uh, for all people as they go forward uh, into their respective careers. I hope that you'll enjoy uh, catching up with people. If you want to uh, have a photograph, if family members want to be photographed uh, with a particular student or a particular mooting team or the like wants to be photographed, uh, I think it'll be relatively easier um, to come forward and to do that at the end. And, but otherwise, on behalf of all the faculty of the Law School, may I say again, well done to the students uh, and thank you very much for coming here and supporting us this evening.